uh, today we will discuss on intention to create legal relation we will continue our lecture but before I proceed I would like to remind you that I uh, use some materials from sometimes uh, from website from um, any website yeah Google and some others uh, lecturers lecture uh, my lecturers lecture uh, whatever notes that I got from internet so all the copyrights remain with the owner and you are not allowed to reproduce this by uploading the notes in student document or whatever you are not allowed to do that uh, I the copyright maintained with the owner so don't do this um, do not upload just use it for yourself so we'll proceed with intention to create legal relation and these uh, uh, rules remain with all my slides, all my lectures. Yeah. So we continue with intention to create legal relation. First of all, the basic of uh, contract law principle is this: um, no contract is legally enforced if the contract is entered by the parties without consent. The parties entered the contract without his full consent. Uh, it's not by his free will he was being forced okay so this kind of contract cannot be legally enforced because when you have no consent you did not give consent to enter contract that means you have no intention to create legal relation a contract must be entered with free will and full consent and with the intention to create legal relation when we talk about intention uh, there's no section mentioned in contract act basically contract act is silent about uh, intention so when contract act is silent where do we go so Malaysian court will refer to English common law I hope you still remember yeah and English common law means all the cases the English precedence yeah to determine the existence of intention right so now uh, what does common law say? Uh, what is the principle of common law regarding uh, intention? So, according to common law principle, uh, there will be no binding contract, okay, if the parties enter the contract, yeah, without intention, right? You can see here, I stated here. There is no binding contract unless the involved party in the agreement have the intention to enter into such relationship under the law. So, if you have no intention in entering a contract, the contract is not binding. So, how do we know? How to determine the existence of intention? So, in determining the existence of intention, we have to refer to... Uh, two elements first we look at the objective test basically two tests objective test or we also call that reasonable man test okay and secondly presumption based on the type of contract so you must remember to determine the existence of intention there are two ways okay two tests that you have to look upon first objective test and second, presumption based on the type of contract. What is this objective test? Reasonable man test. What, who is this reasonable man? How do we say the person is a, reas a reasonable man? Okay. I share with you here that a person of normal intelligence. This is a reasonable man. A person who actually does nothing... A prudent man would not do okay does nothing a prudent would not man would not do and does not omit to do anything that a prudent man would do okay this is reasonable man simple language right I believe you can understand these simple things okay so I don't have to uh, explain more right so when we refer to objective tasks, right, the court will refer to the opinion of a reasonable man. Okay. When the court have to decide on this issue, whether there is intention or there is no intention, when the parties entered into contract, 
the court will look into this objective test. The court will see whether this kind of thing, uh, in deciding this kind of, uh, in doing this, what would a reasonable man do? Okay. Right? The court will presume intention. Alright, the court will presume intention based on the circumstances and what would a reasonable man do. From that, the court will make decision whether the contract was entered with consent or without consent. Right. So when we talk about this reasonable man, when we say that does uh, nothing a prudent would not do, which means like for example, uh, when you drive, you follow the law, okay? You follow the law. You don't simply go and bang into someone cars, okay? That is a reasonable man would not do that, right? Or does not omit to do anything that prudent man would not do. When you would do, which means that when you see accident, what you do? The first thing is to call nine nine nine, right? We call the police. We call the ambulance and ask for help. So. You do not omit your duty as a reasonable man. So, to look into intent of parties in entering into contract, the court will check what would a reasonable man do. If for okay you people, the court will look into all the okay you people, disabled people, what would a disabled person do in such a situation in deciding something or a matter relating to okay you people. Okay. Um, I hope that you will understand. If you don't, uh, text me your question, right? I will answer your question. Man test we will learn in thought uh, in topic number 10, I believe, all right? Uh, we will again discuss this objective task, okay? You see here, the judge or jury will determine whether a person has acted negligently by comparing his or her act or omission with the behavior of the reasonable man. So the court will check. Is this normal person would do? You are a normal person. You are a reasonable person. Would you act like other reasonable person? Or you act differently? Okay? Presumption of intention. So now, in, pre in making presumption. Okay? Um, the there are two type of agreement that we will look into. All right, there are two type of agreement. First, social, family, or other domestic agreement, and second are uh, is commercial commercial agreement. So when we talk about social, family, or other domestic agreement, I will discuss with you agreement between husband and wife, and also agreement between parent and child. So this is on presumption of intention because we have two. Two ways to determine intention, right? First, the objective test. Second, presumption of intention. Okay? So first, we discuss about social, family or other domestic agreement. Okay. How would the court know whether there is an intention to create legal relation? The court will infer, okay, from the language use in the agreement by the parties to see whether there is intention or there's no intention to create legal relation when the party entered the agreement so the court will make inference okay from the language of the party and also the circumstances in which both parties were in at the first time they sign or they entered into the agreement first agreement between husband and wife the legal principle is this we presume that uh, when a husband and wife come into an agreement they have no intention to create legal relation okay they have no intention to create legal relation it's just like between husband and wife husband promise wife to do something for her or Wife promised husband to do something for him and when they promise they have no intention that they will be sued later on. They have no intention that they want to create any legal relation. If they fail, then the spouse will sue them. They don't have any intention. 
But such presumption, it, this is our presumption, yeah. But such presumption may be rebuttable. Depends on the fact of each case. So in uh, using this presumption, okay, that both husband and wife, when they enter into contract, they have no intention to create legal relation, yeah. We must look uh, also the facts of the case. We must look. We must also look at the facts of the case. Uh, now we will refer to case uh, Balfour and Balfour. The facts of the case. First of all, I share with you the fact of the case. Okay, um, the defendant was a civil servant stationed in Ceylon. Then defendant went to England with his wife. The wife falls sick. The doctor say, look, your wife falls sick. The wife cannot go back to Ceylon with you. The wife must stay here and then take medication and cure herself. After she cured herself, then she can go with you. So the husband told the wife, look, you are not feeling well. You are not, uh, not, not okay. You are sick. Uh, you stay here in England. I'm going back to Ceylon myself. And I will pay you £30 per month. Until you come back to Ceylon, right? But then the husband uh, failed to pay, so the wife sued the husband because he promised her to pay, but he failed to pay. So she went to the high court. The high court said uh, the high court decided in her favor, but then the husband appealed. The court of appeal allowed the husband's appeal, right? It was held that, uh, the court held that there was no contract because the party did not intend the agreement should be attended by legal consequences. When the husband, basically the court said, when the husband promised the wife he will pay, he did not have intention to create any legal relation. He have no intention that if I pay, uh, I fail, my wife will sue me. He just said it between husband and wife. Yeah. Uh, this is something that you can read by yourself. I paste here. Create your own and storyboard that. Okay, I took it from internet. I paste here so you can have a look at it and it's easy for you to remember the case. Okay. Now we go for married and married. The fact of the case. Right. A husband uh, left his wife and went to live with another woman. So now the husband left the wife all right uh he, he wanted to leave another woman so the wife said okay you want to live with another woman but we need to make a future arrangement okay and um she basically uh, pressed the husband to make this arrangement and the husband gave gave her some oral promises but the wife insisted to put the promises or whatever they agreed uh, into an agreement, written agreement. And then he wrote an agreement, um, declaration, and then he signed. And he dated. Okay, this, um, dated, uh, this is the notes yeah, I paste here. In consideration of the fact that you will pay, basically he said that you pay the house payment, house charges, until complete which means they have a house and the house is on mortgage so he make a statement if the wife pay everything and the mortgage is cleared he will transfer the house uh, the name of the house the ownership of the house onto the wife okay so he said here yeah, i will agree to transfer the property to your sole own ownership sole ownership and the wife did this payment the wife paid the mortgage, but the husband refused to transfer the house to her, right? And the wife go to court and sue the husband and try to get a declaration from the court stating that the house belonged to her alone as being agreed by the husband as per the, as per the written agreement. Okay. The court of appeal make that um, actually gave the wife declaration that she was the sole beneficial owner of the matrimonial home okay 
and the principle in Balfour and Balfour earlier is not applicable here, okay? Because it says that here, Balfour and Balfour does not apply to husband and wife who are not living in amity, okay? So this is different case. That one different case. So as we said that the court will make inference, but the court will refer to the fact of the case. In looking into whether there is intention to create a good relation or that there is an absence of intention. Okay. Number two, agreement between parents and child. The principle, basically, the principle of buffer buffer apply here, which means husband and wife. When husband and wife, we presume they have no intention to create legal relation. Okay. So does with parent and child. Okay, we have this Jones and Padavatan case, right? What happened was uh, the daughter was working in USA and the mother said, uh, come back, all right? She will provide the daughter's expenses and if the uh, daughter come back to England to study to be a lawyer, study for the bar. And then the daughter accepted. And then in addition, the mother actually offered to provide a house for the daughter and some of the room to be let to tenants. After two years, after two years, the daughter want to quit to study law. She doesn't want to proceed. She, she felt that law is so boring. Yeah, uh, so you don't get bored. This is a compulsory subject for you, even though you are business law student. Okay, and you need to pass with good marks also and with good knowledge. Right. After two years. The daughter refused to proceed as what she promised and she wanted the house. She claimed for the house since the mother promised her the house. But the mother did not want to give her the house. So she sued the mother, right? And it was held that Mrs. Jones was entitled to possession. Basically, the mother uh, maintained the ownership of the house okay what motivate the mother is just to call the daughter and to come back and then to succeed at the bar that's all okay and they had a good term so there was no intention to create legal relation which means there's no intention to make like a real contract with legal binding a binding contract okay so the mother do not, the mother does not has that kind of intention, right? Commercial agreement. When we talk about commercial agreement, why would you enter into an agreement for business for commercial? Why do you enter into agreement? Because you wanted to enter into the agreement, okay? All right? You have intention to enter the agreement. You want the agreement to be binding. In fact, businessmen will find way how to make this agreement binding, whether the agreement that they sign is binding or it's not binding. Okay? So, there is a presumption that the parties do intend to make a legally binding contract unless presumed otherwise. So, the presumption is there is intention. For family, the presumption is there is no intention. To create legal relation but for commercial agreement there is intention to create legal relation the agree we uh, when when the parties enter into contract they want the contract to be binding okay if any party in the agreement says that no i have no intention so the party must rebut this presumption the party must show to the court that look uh, I have no intention to create legal relation. Okay, it is the party who says that no intention need to rebut this presumption. We already discussed Khalil Kabolik smoke ball earlier, right? So I hope that you still remember the case. Okay, and if you try to recall, if you recall the case, okay. We see that the company basically support their claim when they say that they have the best medicine and they support and they said that anyone who consumed the medicine but still got influenza they can claim for hundred pounds. Okay? 
when they say that they have the best medicine, they promise to pay one hundred pound to anybody who used that but still caught influenza, right? They make promise to pay one hundred pound, and they try uh, and they do have intention, caught infer intention from their action where they take one hundred pound, they bank in into the the account to show that look we have this one hundred. Uh, pound we put it here already you, you use our product you still have influenza you can claim this so there was intention on the company's part this is the inference made by the court even though the company said no we don't have any intention but the court look at the facts what happened in the case and make this inference okay you see, the court of appeal rejected the defense of the defendant who can contended that the advertisement was a mere puff and was no intend, not intended to create legal relation. Okay, the court rejected, right? The fact of the, the deposit in the bank was strong evidence that the defendant had contemplated legal liability when they issued when they issued the advertisement. You may correct my uh, typo in this slide. So to sum up, we will say that intention to create legal relation is one of the elements to create a binding contract. The party needs to have intention. We don't have anything in section uh, in Carbon, uh, contract act, but we are we will refer to common law, which means the cases. So there are two ways for you to determine whether there are two uh, two ways for you to determine whether there's intention or there's no intention. First, the objective test, the reasonable man test, and second, the presumption. Okay, uh, for family, the presumption is there's no intention to create legal relation, but for company commercial, there is a uh, presumption to create legal relation. So any party who say otherwise, the party need to rebut the presumption. Now I will upload it two question for your tutorial in your Putra Blast. Please attempt the two questions. This is the first question on consideration. Refer to this slide and the earlier lecture. If you don't remember, go back or flip over your earlier lecture. This is something to do with consideration. Okay. And the question is on intention. So, thank you very much.